Praise the Lord and good morning, everyone. I am so delighted this morning that God has allowed us to connect once again on this platform on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries Sunday morning worship. And I am so grateful to each one of you that have taken the time out uh, to join with us on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it because everything that God does is excellent. God is a God of excellence. God is a God of perfection. God is a God that loves and he loves deeply. And so this morning, I am looking forward to our fellowship together. I am thanking God for this ministry. Cross Nation Ministry is a ministry that God has chosen and God has blessed and God has, is causing his face to shine upon this ministry. That is a blessing locally and a blessing internationally. And I give God all the praise and I give him all the glory and I give him all the honor. Thanking God for the family of Cross Nation Ministries, the friends of Cross Nation Ministries. And there are a number of saints of God who is a part of this ministry and has faithfully attended each time we are able to come together. I want you to know you are appreciated, and I thank God for each and every one of you. We're going to have a great time this evening. I can feel it in my spirit that God is going to continue to bless us because that's what he desires to do. Our God said, no good thing will I withhold from them that will walk up rightly before me. And so this morning, let us begin our time together in a word of prayer, asking God's blessing upon each one of his sons and daughters, each family that is represented, and the family of God universal, because God has people everywhere, and we are a part of the same family. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Eternal God, our Father, this morning, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Father, we are grateful this morning that you have allowed us once again to be able to connect. And we ask, O oh God, that you would bless each and every one of your sons and daughters today in a special way and cause your face to shine upon us. We need you now more than ever, Lord, because we're living in urgent times, difficult times, challenging times. But dear God, you remain the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you change not. You are good all the time. You are gracious all the time. You are loving all the time. And Father, we are grateful in our hearts that we are recipients of your grace and mercy. Allow us, O oh God, to be in the sin of your divine will, that our lives will be pleasing in your sight. Father, I ask this morning in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to heal those that are sick in body, deliver those that are going through challenging times. We thank you, Lord God, for adopting us into your family, granting us the privilege to be called heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Thank you now, Lord, for all that you have done, and we will praise you as long as you allow us to live in this dimension of life. And when this dimension of life is over, we're looking forward, O oh God, to spend eternity with you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord 
and our Savior, and let the people of God say amen and amen. We're going to have a great time this morning, I believe, in sharing. And as you know, we've been talking about uh, every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. Every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. And we left off the last time we were together and we were sharing on uh, that we need uh, the Lamb of God in our lives to survive. And and we have talked about uh, the work of the Lamb. We have talked about the walk of the Lamb. We have talked about the blood of the Lamb of God. We've even talked about the wrath of God or the wrath of the Lamb of God. And we closed the last time on the worship of the Lamb of God. We want to continue that this morning and perhaps go into another fresh note, if you will. So this morning, I, I want to call to your attention uh, to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, uh, which is our foundational scripture. Exodus 12, 1 to 9. This was the first Passover that was instituted by God when God brought his people out of the land of Egypt to take them into the land of Canaan, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Look what it says in Exodus 12, beginning at verse number one. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the first of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it, according to the number of souls, every man according to his eating, Shall he make your count of the lamb? Verse number five. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on two sides posts, on the upper door posts, on the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall not eat of the flesh in that night and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Verse number nine. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. His head with his legs, and with his pretense thereof. This is our foundational scripture on the series of messages, Every Family Needs the Lamb of God to Survive. Now, 
we want to continue this morning talking about the worship of the Lamb of God. The worship of the Lamb of God. And we want to go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 5 is where we want to go this morning uh, to continue our study uh, on the worship of the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God will be worshipped. Praise the name of our God. He will be worshipped because he deserves worship predicated upon the finished work of Calvary and all that he have achieved for mankind and in particularly the church, the body of Christ that have chosen him as their Lord and Savior, accepted him. Praise the name of our God. So I, I want us to look in Revelation chapter 5, beginning at verse 6, and this is what it says. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, this is John talking, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Verse number nine is a focus verse because I want us to focus on it a little bit this morning. And it says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God, notice, kings, priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and are all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And verse 14 says, And the four beasts saith, Amen. And the four and twenty elders 
fell down and worship him that liveth forever and forever. Revelation chapter 5 gives us a description of the worship of the Lamb of God. The beasts, which are angelic beings, the four and twenty elders are those that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And there was a new song that was sung in worship. A song of redemption that reflect what the Lamb had accomplished on the behalf of mankind, and particularly the church, the redeemed of the Lord. And they sung a new song, giving praise and worship to the Lamb of God. Keep in mind the theme. Every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. Now, the four and twenty elders, of course, represent the redeemed of the Lord, the angelic beings who are ministering spirits, if you will, that surround the throne of God and the lamb was seen as though he was slain. The marks of his crucifixion was visible to those that were there. Keep in mind the church at this time has already been raptured and the church is with the Lord. And the redeemed song that was sung, it was a special song that reflected what the Lamb had accomplished on behalf of those that gave their lives to Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God. Now, the song itself, and I want to emphasize this, is on the Lamb's work of redemption. That what the new song is all about. It emphasizes, is emphasis, is on the Lamb's work of redemption. It is a song of worship. Now, I want to dissect this song, and I want you to make notes what the song is really saying concerning the Lamb of God. To worship is to ascribe worth. Are you with me? To worship is to lay before another in complete submission. To worship is to prostrate oneself or to give continual adoration. But in the song that was sung, I want you to make note of what the emphasis are. The song honored the price of redemption. The song honored, honors the price of redemption. And what was that price? For you were slain. That was the price. The lamb was slain. For you were slain. Are you listening, children of God? 
the song that was sung honors the worker of redemption. The song honors the worker of redemption. And it says, you have redeemed us. It is ascribed to the Lamb of God. You have redeemed us. This is what the multitude was singing or praising, oh, the Lord. Are you listening, children of God? The song honors the destination, if you will, of redemption. It honors the destination of redemption by saying, you have redeemed us to God. The, de the destination of redemption is that we have been redeemed to God. The Lamb of God did that. This is why every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. If we are to survive and spend eternity with God, then the Lamb of God must be in our lives. Every family, if it is to survive, needs the Lamb of God. So the song honors the destination of redemption. And the destination of redemption is to God, to God. Because the song said, you have redeemed us to God. You. In other words, acknowledging the fact that the Lamb of God redeemed us to God because no one could come to God or come to the Father. And Jesus makes the statement, no one can come unto the Father but by me except by me. He was the way. He is the only way to be redeemed to the Father. Having been lost in sin, having been shapen in iniquity, the way back to where God originally intended us to live is with him. And so, as a result of Adam's sin, we were separated from God. But the Lamb of God has redeemed us back to God. All of this is in the song. Now, also, the song honors the payment of redemption. Stick with me now. The song that was sung, a new song, as recorded in verse 9 of Revelation 5, the song honors the payment of redemption. And the payment of redemption is by your blood. The singers, if you will, that had harps singing unto God were saying, in essence, the payment that you paid for our redemption is by your blood. This is why the Word of God says, without the shedding of blood, that's in Hebrews, 
without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. There is no forgiveness. There is no restoration from sin. So, children of God, this is why it is so important for me to emphasize to you and to the family of God and to those that do not know God that every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. And the payment of redemption is by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And eternal life is only possible through the shedding of innocent blood. And Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, shed his blood willingly, voluntarily, on purpose for the redemption of lost humanity. And Jesus says, no man takes my life. I am able to lay it down and I'm able to take it up again. He did that. That was also incorporated in this new song that was sung. And also the song honors the scope of redemption. Make a note of that. The song honors the scope of redemption. And the scope of redemption is included in the song. And the scope of redemption is every tribe and tongue, and people, and nation can be saved. That is the powerfulness and the efficaciousness of the blood of the Lamb that is not just for a few people. A few nations. It is for every tribe, every tongue, language, every people, regardless of ethnicity and nation, regardless of culture. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the lamb is not restricted. The blood of Jesus Christ was poured out for humanity's sake. And I want you to see that, children of God, that this is not just a song. It's a song that is laced with significance, reflecting and emphasizing what the Lamb of God has done and has accomplished for humanity. And because of this, he deserves worship. He deserves praise. And not only that, the song that was sung honors the length of redemption. Oh God, help me in here this morning. This song honors the length of redemption. And the length of redemption, it says, you have made us kings and priests to our God. Isn't it powerful? 
the length of redemption. Look at what is in our future. You have made us kings and priests to our God. Who did that? The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. God the Father knew in advance, even before the world was created, that the Lamb of God would be slain. He saw it. He knew it. He willed it. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And in that God is omniscient, in that he knows everything, nothing takes him by surprise. So whatever God's will, whatever God desires to do, is already in place. God is never without an answer. He is never without a solution. God is never stuck. God sees the end from the beginning. God is a God of all knowledge. And God is a God that cannot learn anything because he knows everything. He knows you and I intimately, perfectly. There is nothing about us that he is not aware of. This is one of the things that excites me so much, to know that I serve a God that knows me better than I know myself. So when I come before him in any situation or any circumstance, I'm not giving him information. I am sharing my heart with him. I'm expressing my heart to him because he already knows. In truth of God, that kind of knowledge, that kind of understanding should cause us to be worshipers of God that would worship him because he is worthy. He is worthy to be worshiped. He's worthy to be praised. And children of God, the song that was sung, the new song that is spoken of in verse 9 of Revelation 5, this song honors the result of redemption. It honors the result of redemption. The result of redemption is expressed in the song. And it says, and we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> Did you get that? The results, we shall reign on the earth. This is why it is important for us to know as believers. The word of God says, if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. We shall reign with him on the earth. After this earth has gone through, if you will, restitution back to its Edenic condition, then it would be feasible to reign with Christ. As the earth stands now, it's not ready for us to reign with Christ because the earth was cursed along with Man, when man sin, the earth has many desert places. The earth don't produce in certain places. The earth is barren in certain places. But this earth 
is going to be fixed and renovated and reestablished to its ethnic condition because the children of God, the people of God, the believers of God is going to reign on the earth one day. And the song that was sung, a new song, it honors the result of redemption. The result of redemption, and we shall reign on the earth. Praise the name of our God. In other words, children of God, believers are kings because of their royal birth. Make a note of that. Believers are kings because of their royal birth and their destiny to reign with Jesus. You see, Jesus is king. He is king. We are destined to be kings and priests. But Jesus is king of kings, Lord of lords. And there is no one that is in the class with him. Jesus is the Lamb of God. This is why in John, I think it's in John Gospel, chapter 1 verse and verse 29, John was baptizing on one day and John looked up and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Behold, look, look at the Lamb. Jesus was walking down to the Jordan where John was baptizing. And John looked up. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Notice, he said, Taketh away. Under the old covenant, sins were just covered for a year, for one year. And the next year, sin had to be covered again. But the Lamb of God... When he came, he took away sin. Are you listening? He took away sin when he died on the cross of Calvary. He took it away completely. And this is why Jesus, when he died on the cross of Calvary, his death, was once and for all. There was not no need for another death, another sheep or goat, a bullock to die. Jesus, the Lamb of God, fulfilled every sacrifice that was offered under the old covenant. Are under the Old Testament, if you will. So believers are kings because of their royal birth and their destiny to reign with Christ on the earth. And also, children of God, Believers are priests because they need no mediator other than Jesus himself. Because Jesus Christ is our high priest. Are you listening? <laughs> He's our high priest. Believers are priests. Because there is no need, no mediator 
other than Jesus Christ is needed. When we pray, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. And when we pray that way, with an understanding, God moves because of the prayers that comes from the child of God. Children of God, this morning, I'm excited in my spirit, and I really wanted you to understand what the song was all about. Here in Revelation chapter 5, that speaks of the worship of the Lamb. And I went through trying to dissect this for you so that you would have a clearer and a better understanding of the worship of the Lamb. The song honors the price of redemption. The song honors the worker of redemption. The song honors the direction of redemption. Are you with me? The song honors the payment of redemption. The song honors the scope of redemption. And the song honors the length of redemption. And the song honors the results of redemption. And it is important to have that understanding, children of God, and this is why I want to encourage us this morning to be worshipers. Let us worship the Lord with a pure heart, with a sincere heart. Let's worship him with all of our might, with all of our strength. Let's do it from deep within with the knowledge and the understanding, if it was not for the shedding of blood of the Lamb of God, we will not be who we are today. We are blessed. We are saved. We are delivered. We are free. We are kings and priests. That's on God's agenda. And because of the Lamb of God, we are who we are today. And because he loves us with such intensity and consistency and with purity, he says to us, in Psalms number one, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth its fruit in its season and his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. Aren't you glad that you've been called chosen by God and made special in the economy of God. God, he loves us, he cares about us, and he's not willing that any should perish. He loves you, he loves me more than we love ourselves. This morning, my heart rejoice in the God of my salvation. And I am so grateful this morning that you have taken the time out to spend this time with me in fellowship and the study of God's word 
and in the worship of the Lamb of God. Every family needs the Lamb of God to survive. Share this message with someone that needs to know about Jesus Christ. Children of God, be dutiful, be consistent in your walk with God. Give him your best. Serve him with all your heart, your mind and soul. Because one day we're going to see his face and we will see his face in peace as he really is. And if we have this hope within us, we purify ourselves even as he is pure. Every family, your family, my family, the neighbor's family needs the Lamb of God to survive. Thanks for joining me this morning on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries Sunday Morning Worship. I am so delighted that I have the privilege of serving. What a joy to serve God's people with the Word of God. Thank God for each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, let us bow our heads just for a moment. Father, in the name of your Son, be glorified, be magnified, be honored. We love you, we adore you, we magnify your name. We worship you with all of our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. And with our strength, sit on the throne of our lives, Lord, and order our footsteps that we will be all that you have created us to be. And we will praise thy name as long as you allow us to live in this dimension of life. And when this dimension of life is over, we want to see your face in peace throughout the eons of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the people of God say amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. In the name of the Lord, join me next week at the same time on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries. Sunday morning worship. And stay tuned now to hear a word from Elder Timothy Sanders. God bless you, heaven smile upon you, and give you perpetual peace. I love you, and you can't do anything about it. Here, Elder Timothy Sanders. Praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you decided to join us on this beautiful Sunday morning. On yesterday, uh, we had our first official prayer here in the sanctuary, uh, preparing for our launch on July 4th at 10 a.m. So for the next three Saturdays, uh, June 19th, June 26th, and July 3rd, we will be here at 10 a.m. praying for Cross Nation. And not only praying for Cross Nation, praying for you, praying for our families. Um, so we just look forward to seeing you here. If you would like to be a blessing to Cross Nation, you have three ways to do so, either by the Cash App or by the Giveify app, or if you'd like to send in your check or money order into Cross Nation Ministries 550 Genesee Street, Buffalo, New York, 14204. We would greatly appreciate it. And guess what? There's only one thing that we want you to do on this morning, and that is to have an awesome and an excellent day. God bless.